All right, let's move on to the next section, which is talking about the types of machine learning algorithms. The first type we'll talk about is what's called classification. Classification is a type of supervised lear learning problem. In supervised learning, you're trying to learn a mapping from features X to target Y. We already saw a lot of examples of this just in the last section. What's particular about classification is that the target is discrete, meaning that it can only take one of a finite number of values. For example, when you say it's binary, it can only take one of two values. Just as an example, consider the credit assessment problem. In the credit assessment problem, you want to predict if a customer at a bank is high risk or low risk. So there are two possible values, so it's a classification problem. Now, a real bank would use a lot of features to try to make that prediction. But just as a toy example, imagine it had just two features, the income of that customer and its savings in the bank account. We could visualize the data for this problem like this. We, have, we take each feature as a rep, represent each feature as a vector, x1, x2, and each customer would be a point in this x1, x2 space. That is its income and savings. We could also label the points with say one color, red, for the, the customers that have high risk, and a, another color, say purple, for the customers that have been low risk. Maybe that was determined by whether they defaulted on a pass loan or something like that. What we want to do in the supervised learning problem is to learn the function that maps these features to these targets. So in the credit assessment problem, that would be looking at a way to look at the income and savings and make a prediction if the customer is high risk or low risk. Based on this very simple toy data, it's not real data at all, we could make a prediction rule like this. See, all the low-risk customers are in this top quadrant here, and all the high-risk customers are below this. This particular type of decision that we would learn is actually called a decision tree, because you first look at whether the income is above a certain level, and then you look at whether the savings is above a certain level. We'll turn to talk about this in the very last unit of this class. Regression is another type of supervised learning problem. The difference here is that you're trying to predict a continuous value target, as opposed to a target that would have one uh, finite number of values. For example, suppose you want to try to predict happiness. Well, happiness is pretty subjective, but Let's say that there's some um, measurable way of quantifying that, maybe through surveys or something like that. This is actually what was done in some uh, statistics website. That actually has a great statistics website for reading about regression, which we're going to actually talk about in the next unit. Now, how would you predict happiness? Well, there's probably a lot of features that go into predicting happiness. But you could imagine, for example, you could imagine income, maybe the country you live in, maybe your age. Here's a graph where this, uh, in this website, they try to predict happiness based on income. And they have a number of dots, one for each person, and then they try to learn a relation. In this case, they try to learn a relation by picking a linear mapping, that happiness is a linear function of your income. Well, you can believe that or not. You can read the website um, more if you want to learn about that. Both the last two examples are examples of supervised learning because you're learning to predict a target from a feature. Unsupervised learning is where you just have values of x, if you like, no target. It's trying to learn just patterns or what normally happens in that data. A common example is clustering. For example, this is an um, image from an IBM website which does the following. 
it gets a number of unorganized or uncategorized documents. I'm sure you have a lot of those kind of documents, maybe on your computer. And what you might want to do is have a computer try to categorize them in some way. So it just takes these documents and finds categories or groups of these documents and assigns each document to those categories. This is an example of unsupervised learning because the data just consists of values of these documents. Each document may be represented in some way, but there's no specific target with those documents that you're trying to predict. This particular type of unsupervised learning clustering is actually used in a lot of interesting applications. For example, customer segmentation, in image compression, in bioinformatics. And we're actually going to talk about um, clustering also pretty close to the end of this uh, uh, class. Let's go on to the final broad type of machine learning um, algorithms or types of algorithms. The class is called reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, which is taken from this image, an agent tries to learn to make actions that interact with an environment to maximize a reward. Just to make that concrete, a very typical application is when you're trying to write, make a computer program play chess. In this case, the environment is the chess board, if you like, and the actions that the computer is trying to do is pick the next move. For example, move the bishop to this square. It has to do this based on looking at the current position of the board. And at the end of the game, it will also get a reward whether it won or lost. All these types of um, reinforcement learning systems typically act in some closed loop manner because there's actions which then feed back and get rewards. Reinforcement learning has a lot of other complexities that are not present in the other types of machine learning problems. There are two key ones. The first is that you have to trade off what's called exploitation, which is what you learn from your past app actions, but also you want to try to explore new actions, ones that you don't know whether they will be good or bad until you try them. A second very challenging aspect of reinforcement learning is what's called credit assignment. That is trying to understand which actions in the past led to the current reward. You could imagine if the computer continued to play this game, it's only at the end, the final checkmate, where the computer learns whether it won or not. And then somehow it has to go back over all the moves in that game that it did and find out if it lost what move made it lose or what set of moves and how it would try to adapt those for future games. This is a nice chart from uh, this Belgian website which kind of gives you a nice summary if you like of these types of uh, machine learning algorithms. In one fork, if you like, or one branch of this tree, we have supervised learning and we have classification and regression. We also have unsupervised learning and we have reinforcement learning. This also gives you a number of types of examples. And you could consider some of these examples if you want for your project. Finally, let me just wrap up with what is the hype in machine learning today. There are a large number of classes, and this class itself is very large. So you're probably wondering why so many people are interested in machine learning. Well, machine learning has had a lot of pretty remarkable successes of things that would be pretty unimaginable even just five years ago. Autonomous driving is not yet commercial, but we're seeing a lot of success and progress of cars or computers that could learn to drive like humans. We're seeing them win in games like Jeopardy, which are very complicated because you have to learn how to process language um, and really sort through a large amount of information. It's also been able to win games like um, Go, the famous uh, Chinese game, 
which people thought would never be possible for a computer, and also be able to translate. You probably use many of these services already, and maybe it was some of these things that attracted you to this class. The question is, why was it able to do all of these remarkable things now, um, given the length of time that people have been thinking about machine learning? Indeed, machine learning is a very old field, and a lot of the pioneering work, including things that we'll talk about in this class, go back at least to the 1950s. So, what's new? Well, there's really two things. The first is the access to large amounts of data. And that comes from the ability to store much larger amounts of data than ever poss before possible, in particular in things like data centers. We're going to actually talk a lot about this later in the class when we talk about deep learning and we'll review some of that history. You also have the ability to have large connectivity to access that data and other large sources of data like the internet. But the second part of this is the computational advances. The fact is that processing large amounts of data takes enormously powerful computers. But this has also improved a lot in the last 10 years. We can, we can bring many computers together in clusters, and we have new hardware to process this. I didn't put it on this list, but there's also one third aspect, which is just the ingenuity of many people working in this field to make the progress that has happened. 